Yeah, uh, so just a couple of hours ago, I'll give you an update on Michael Olise, possibly uh, the club that Obama call um, between Chelsea and, of course, Manchester United. Something has happened. Something very, very dramatic has happened. And I told you, Zay, when it comes to Chelsea Football Club, uh, they are not going to buy all of those players. They are going to buy um, Olise, any Alvarez, any Cisco altogether. They have to make a choice. And in making a choice now, they have to choose just one of these attackers. Because like I said, there's a need for a center forward and a different skill set of a center forward that will be up front and then give Jackson competition. Mind you, say in the last few hours, Chelsea striker friend Nicolas Jackson with um, the Senegalese national team in the World Cup qualifiers of our boy on the African continent. So he has picked up an injury, an ankle injury. Um, at the beginning, they thought it was just a sprain. But then they went back, they realized that it was a big injury that Nicolas Jackson has picked. And everybody that watched Chelsea last season knows the importance of Nicolas Jackson to that Chelsea side. Very, very, very important player uh, in running the channels for Chelsea, um, winning the balls, holding a play, connecting play, linking a play with the midfielders and then the wingers and getting into space and, of course, getting some goals. In his first season, the numbers of the match Chelsea you know, was good enough, um, especially for a striker who was in the Spanish La Liga, who had just left Senegal just a couple of years ago and coming to play in English Premier League for the first season. So um, it was a very, very important one, a huge one um, that went on for Nicolas Jackson. Now, just yesterday, Michael Lulisi has gone on to follow Manchester United on Twitter and on X. Um, I've said it several times that this transfer has a tendency of taking a lot of twists and turns. For Chelsea, they already had conversations with Ulises and Tarag. Ulises and Tarag has reached back to them. They all agree that they want to go in a certain way. They have told Ulises and Tarag to next week, I mean this week, uh, they are going to work on finalizing the deal. I mean, Ulises has every right to be follow club. He'll follow. He already follows Chelsea. But just a couple of hours ago, he did follow Manchester United, also on Twitter, um, waiting for it. I said to yesterday, uh, Ulises was holding back for Manchester United because of the uncertainty of the management. On them. So as long as Eric Tang is still there and they are uncertain about who or my next manager be in next season, or definitely it looks as he said there is going to be um something when it comes to Michael Olisi staying uh, or moving to Chelsea um, instead of going to Manchester United. So it's going to develop, and that's when it develops the latest, the list of details I'll bring it here, the list of, of, of changes I'll bring it here. Anything that happens in between the lines with Michael Olisi coming in and what of you, I'm definitely going to bring it here so that you enjoy the analysis on Fifi Manfred on YouTube. Guys, if you're not subscribed to the channel, um, I entreat you to pause the video, go back and subscribe to the channel, turn on notification, and then do choose all. It's important to pass over SRDN. You know, subscribe to the channel, um, do choose all. Um, show, I mean, show us so we'll all share link. So I might share the link into any group that you are in. Let people enjoy the analysis over here. Anytime you watch, do want to share their link. So at least just one person, let them also enjoy the analysis. So share the link, um, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notification if you haven't. Now, there is more details about the Michael Lewis in the transfer conversation. But yesterday, two Chelsea players are beginning to feel brand new. Um, so throughout last season, Two very key players that clearly get to my Chelsea as a, the season when you bought Coco Boy, you know, they didn't get to the levels where they want to get. In fact, between both of them, they play less than five games throughout the season. And everybody keep on saying that if Chelsea can get these two players back, uh, their season next season is going to be very important because they are key players. Um, one of them has played under Enzo Mariska or Manchester City, and players when I make up once. I'm talking about two very important players. First of all, a Bantier friend of Romeo Lavia. So Romeo Lavia has started ball work in terms of the training. And then yesterday um, he was with his team on the grass or started so he training over there. And then if you look at Romeo Lavia's Instagram, if you look at the kind of things that he was telling his people that are close to him, Romeo Lavia has now been clear to everybody. He said he is fit, he was going to feel brand new next season. He was starting to get in shape before preseason starts and he can catch up because he hasn't been match fit, he has been out for a very long time. Mind you. Rumi Lavia injury no started as a knee injury, it became an ankle injury, it became a hip injury, and an injury no society several times before the season ended. But I can tell you, say Rumi A developing very, very well with respect to his injury, you know, and then he's getting better as a player. Next season, say Chelsea you got Rumi Lavia in their ranks. So it gives Enzo Mareska an opportunity to play in a flat 4-3-3. Flat 4-3-3. Say 
Enzo S C T R. Then they can be two attacking number eight. Say, me no C T R. It means that even with somebody like Enzo Maris, um, 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 Romeo Lavia, Chelsea don't necessarily need to invert a fullback. They can still keep a fullback, get them to bump high. Then there's going to be the rest defense of three because Lavia will now slot in between the two outside centre backs now. Mind you. The principle of Enzo Maresca and yes, a chinchin chai as any fullback number inverted. The principle is that he's supposed to get five players in his rest defense. So, five players now at Leicester City, he decided to invert a mate for that to do that. A lot of coach can decide to invert a mate for that. One of those which also have a sitting DM, like maybe Lavia. Then Lavia sits in the middle of the pack so that you are going to have um, two more players next to him to join him at, in the middle of the pack. And this time, is Lavia sitting, then Enzo Fernandez can push up more guys so you can sit next to him. Then the three players that are back will be there. Then it's going to be five players in the rest defense who deal with turnovers, who deal with counter attacks, who deal with such balls, which is very, very important for the team. And Sanya Manema we in Enzo Mareska Eshe. And if Lavia is that definitely adds that to the team, which is very, very important. Now, away from all of those things, another one is very, very important, and it is the job of Wesley Fofana. Trust me. If Wesley Fofana gets back to Chelsea, not so a fully fitter, he adds a lot more to the team. A very good centre back on the ball, also very good pacey centre back. Apart from to see Chelsea, they toss in and then be a you have a common team. You know? None of the centre backs are not with Chelsea, and I know he as pacey as as um, Wesley Fofana. Wesley Fofana with a lot of pace, and I keep on telling you about the dog and cat characteristic of centre backs. Or yes, as a centre back. You need the aggressor, you need the one that reads the game, and then Westy Fofana adds to that mix of possible aggressors on FIFA. If you want to, in the grand duel statistics are huge up there. Um, in the area of statistics, although for his height, he's one of the best for his height in the um, in when he was at Leicester City and the few games that he has played for Chelsea. He's also very, very good in reading of the game. And when you want to play with your high line, you want to push up and leave spaces in behind so that if the ball turns over or the ball goes in behind, your center backs can use the pace to go and deal with it. Wesley Fofana is one of those guys. He has also started training um, more like an, a, a cardio work off the field, jog, jog, um, jogging and juggling the ball outside of the field to stay fit because, of course, precision ever. If these two players are able to stay fit, and my catch was it, one of the first KPIs that Chelsea 4 are giving themselves going into the next season, and they say they need to keep on the players not fit. Whoever that it is, we need to avoid a lot of injuries, avoid a lot of muscle injuries. Reduce the number of injuries that we have. It should be minimal. I'm not saying it's a change in nature. Nobody's going to get injured. Somebody definitely will get injured, but it should be minimal. And Chelsea are trying very hard in getting these players back and making sure say, those injuries are minimal. Our community, we wait to see with these players coming in and all the updates there. Also, our Chelsea Football Club, we wait to see how all of those things. I told you about Benjamin Shesko and Bra, uh, Julian Alvarez. I've told you my thoughts. It's not, it doesn't look like a idea. It will just happen out of the. It's just going to happen. It will take a lot for Chelsea to do the deal for Julian Alvarez. I, 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 I'll, I'll tell you that. Um, then, last night, I stayed up at night, almost um, 12 a.m. Um, Ghana time, to watch Ecuador versus Argentina. I didn't yeah, because I had read a lot about Kendry Paye, um, Chelsea for young player, and I'm a world fan of you, um, Independiente de la Ville, obviously, a very good midfielder. Um, 17 years of age, one for the future. And I'm kind of several times saying, for Chelsea, I'm planning you know, say, yes, stockpiling the best talent in the world. And then later, we will put them together, then they can thrive. Now, one of the best talents in Independiente de la Ville, plays in a Copa Libertadores, um, he has played against Palmeiras, so Estabao, Williana, Chelsea, you know, maybe you do, you know, he just, he just led to the final signature for him to come to Chelsea. For Kendry Paye, is done. In Yami Adama 2025, is going to come in now. The thing with Kendry Paye is that, they say that he's the best talent that has come out of Ecuador in the last 10 years. And yes, it's Ecuador. Ecuadorians don't really produce some of the best players. Oh, we are it's, it's, it's an averagely, um, average country that produces a few quality players. But they say this guy is different. So I sat down. Um, the Copa America and Ayabaso. So definitely it was um, a dress rehearsal or a friendly game between Ecuador and Argentina. And Michelle Game, no? I think it is true. One of the things that struck me about Kendry Payet and work rate, I mean, for a 17-year-old boy, they're very talented on the ball. Usually, these boys don't work hard. Take this from me. As somebody who watch a lot of young players now, most of the times, 17-year-olds, some with a lot of talent, some with a lot of exposure, they don't work hard. And this boy 
works hard without the ball. And, and, and I've said it several times here. If you want to play football, you play football on the ball. But if you want to win football, you win football without the ball. So the more players you have who work hard for the team without the ball, the higher your chances so we win any game. And yesterday, yes, um, Ander, and Helde Maria scored that opener in there, but it was important. Moise Caicedo was obviously also his top self in that game. Dominated play, break play while she was in there. Showed why he's Moise Caicedo um, against Rodrigo de Pomo on FIFA. And another good news I told Chelsea, they said, Enzo Fernandez, Enzo Fernandez for the very first time since the surgery, you know, um, as the long list of Chelsea players. And mind you, before that season ended, that Chelsea were almost five players on the injured list. Fufana, Lavia, Robert Sanchez, Enzo Fernandez, Mina were injured. At some point in time, Axel de Sashi was also injured. And now, Enzo Fernandez played the first game um, since the Sergio you know, in the Henia Sergio you know, you know, which was also very, very important. It, um, Kendrick Paye, excellent. The work created something I spotted. Some, yes, the talent, everybody had read it, had seen the short videos and whatnot. In a full game, I wanted to make my own assessment. And I think that the first thing that struck me is the work rate of Abrantia, your friend, Kendrick Paye. And for me, if you have such work rates with the talent, trust me, the talent, everybody, a lot of people have talent, but something else will take you to the top, and it's the work rate. And it looks as if said, Kendrick Pye has the work rate to take him to the top, and then we'll wait to see how all that goes in there. And um, so, yeah, that was it by um, by way of um, the Chelsea players that played in there. Um, the, the Euros is coming. I don't know the kind of team that you support or whatever, but obviously, I need to run you through all of those teams. For me, um, I've said it several times that I'm an Italian by association. I love Italy. I love a lot of things about Italy. Um, this Italian side definitely, and yeah, the original Italian side that you say, okay, this is the Italian side that has a lot of quality. But I think that they have a very good manager, Luciano Spalletti. I think they're a very, very good manager. Ain't it? So, oh, child bets, not say, yeah, yes, oh, she Italian for no more, anything. Own oh, Shedan Shed Italian I know I'm a little bit careful because there are some good players in the Scalvini, Carlo Fiori, Federico Chiesa, um, Giorgino obviously um, anchored the middle with um, 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 Nicolo Barella with Fifi on him. At the back, obviously, a good mix of goalkeeper between Mere, Donnarumma, and Vicario. You would have to choose one, obviously, maybe to go for Donnarumma, but I love Vicario. His on the ball abilities now. They will definitely go for a three back. So Bastoni Mo will lead the back line. Achebe obviously was put out of the national team. Then up top, Davide Fratesi Mo will try and lead the lines and see how it goes. But yesterday they played a good game against Iceland, won by a goal to zero. It's a quality Italian team, not like the one that won them um, the last the last Euros. But trust me, in that system, they can hurt anybody in Europe. In team. Be careful. For me, my ultra favorite hey, um Portuguese national team with Roberto Martinez. I think that the Portuguese team have myriad of talent especially in the middle of the pack one of the things i need to me have portugal for in recent times and is that their midfielders were not technical and combative at the same time so danilo um pereira the last time all of these guys were very combative they could eat spaces but they were not technical this time we have a young boy called um jao neves jao, jao neves any other portuguese people say it you know um excellent player in terms of technical ability also does a lot of hard work for the team without the ball eats a lot of space I'm um, going we'll cover a lot of space for the team, you know. Um, or tackle and I've got this as he's asked for the point. I'm a born, you know, okay, kind of shirt in a shame, run into channels, wins the ball back now. I feel that he's able to give the pass. And I'm a person make I say, Oh, she now, when you're born, you can pass the ball, no, you can go to the channels when you're born, and after all, something yet you might be a team, you know. And that's what I brand your friend Ruby Nevers, I am at the Portuguese national team. So he is in there, um, amongst all the other Portuguese players, Jao Felix Mo. Um, uh, Bruno Fernandes, of course, Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, they have a very good goalkeeper in Diego Costa now. Echeon and Rubin Diaz, Mo Herra, the back for them. Gonzalo Inacio, very, very good um, in the Portuguese Super Liga. Very good player. The excellent fullbacks also in their team. I think so Portugal are just having the full package now. Zao Cancelo. All of these guys are in there, and Portugal have a very good sighting. You, you, for me, that's my favorite. And, and, and Maka, people disagree with this. I don't know if you disagree with this. Agree. Let me know in the comment section. I think that one of the best coaches tactically is Roberto Martinez, but people don't give him credit for it. Yes, in the days at Everton wasn't one of the best, but definitely I think that Roberto Martinez is one of the best coaches in the world. Yes, um, also the English team is there, very, very good side on paper. I have issues with on, on, on the defense now. Luke Shaw, Carl Walker, Kieran Trippier, um, Louis Dank, um, um, Ezri, is Ezri concert part? Uh, but of course, I know that there is Maguire in there. This defense, I don't really have a lot of confidence in them, especially 
when their midfield is a one thing for you know, are not too good without the ball. Let's decline, right? So the decline is more box to box. But then the guy that will break up play for them, um, Kobe Main isn't that guy. I, I have a feeling that if Southgate doesn't take care, he will, he will emphasize on attacking part of the game and he will leak goals. So that's the fairy of the English team. Obviously, they're a very, very good team as well. Uh, with Harry Kane, John Bellingham, confidence of the Eba tournament. Uh, if you look in the middle of the pack, also somebody like um, Ebreche is a very, very good player. Only one ball, trust me. And I, I, I said the last time, say the difference between Ebreche is a any jagulish in the Emma England for the fans because for Ebreche is a he is productive up front, scored 11 goals, assisted about four of them. Jagulish didn't have those numbers, and that is why Ebreche is a echo in the uh, Euros, whilst Jagulish isn't going in the um. Of course, the outright favorite will be uh, uh, the French national team. Brilliant team. Brilliant, brilliant team. Uh, Le Bleu of France and uh, with N'Golo Conte coming back. Of course, they wanted that because sometimes in tournaments, you can't do all so much on just one DM. And they had it in Eduardo Camavinga. Yes, or then Chimeni is there, but Chimeni for France. France is going to be more box to box. It's going to play the Adrian Rabiot. It's going to play the Bless Matuidi role, actually. Oh, and you need somebody that will sit. Mind you, Paul Pogba is out. Matuidi is out. So, once Andrew Rabi is there, they need the extra GL level finish for them. France have always won competitions with solidity and game with season. So, on the cup far, they need to be as solid as possible. And that's how they've brought on N'Golo Conte. Yes, you know the obvious quality. William Saleh by Ebu Konati. Oko, I'm a goal post um, They have excellent Mike Mignon right now coming back to be the number one goalkeeper. There is obviously the other um, Steve Mandanda who are still in there. Um, full backs, the French have a lot of quality and of course experience in DJ Deschamps I will lead the Lions for and the French for the killer no Tony Mbappé in him say if he has any chance of winning the Ballon d'Or this is the only opportunity left for him to show the world what he can do indeed a big one the Argentines the Brazilians also playing the Copa America I mean I don't mind the course of the coming just before the competition keeps off proper and I'll do a proper preview one for the the Euros and one for the Copa America but today is just um, your morning updates and everything that's going on in the world of sports and then the breakdowns for you my name hey fifi my friend uh, thank you very much for joining me i'll see you later in the day hopefully on for i mean another update preview of the ghana game and then later on um after the ghana game thank you enjoy